what drives me really is a story. It's finding interesting stories that you want to put on the screen, stories that really you connect with on a personal, emotional, narrative level, and stories that you feel will engage an audience on a similar level. I feel there's a, a rootedness in the west of Ireland. There's a, a, a deep well of story and history that we like to delve into and, and can be, be represented on screen in, in ways that maybe some other parts of the country can't. So the series that I'm here shooting in, Le Hinch's Mother, it's a story that's rooted in this town. It's a story that's rooted in this environment with the sea and the cliffs and the burren. But it's a story that has gone on to sell internationally. And I think, you know, it's, it, it's a testament to the calibre of the work we do in the West of Ireland, the crews we have in the West of Ireland, that a series like this that can be filmed here and, you know, a story very much of this place can go on and be sold all over the world and appeal to audiences all over the, all over the globe. If somebody told me when I was six years old that I'd be making a living combining sounds, pictures, music to tell stories, I'd pinch myself. It's a real privilege to work in this industry and that's all I'd say to anyone entering this industry. Stick with it, grit your teeth, get your training, but then enjoy it. It's a real privilege to be able to tell stories in this digital form. It's really, really exciting. With the recent City Cahar scheme, where we're making Irish language films and that are reaching a global audience, such as Fosco, which is the film we made, I see a very recent development where we're breaking through that barrier of bias against the Irish language. People are taking notice and saying, Jesus, these stories are really good. How come we haven't noticed this before? And I think there is a bit of a wave going on in terms of Irish language production where people are taking notice and seeing the quality of the work that's coming out of the West. The Going Film Centre is a unique resource in the West. I remember in the early days when filmmaking equipment and editing equipment was dreadfully expensive. It was a great um, community that people could gather around, meet, share ideas, share gear, and we're able to make films at low cost. And it's great to look to the future that Ardon, the, in its new iteration, will go on to promote a younger generation of filmmakers and create a community for people who are often working separately to bring them together. I arrived in 2019, September, and I graduated just a few months before the, before the pandemic happened, so. I just found the website and I found the short documentary bursary on the website when I was working at a gas station. I submitted the one-page script and I didn't expect anything out of it, but then I got the opportunity and it was, it was, I was delighted with it. And that's how I met Donald first. Our mentoring session was really good. I think he helped me to find my own voice in a way because it's, it's hard to find clarity sometimes and you have so many ideas bombarding in your head and you have to pick one and stick with it because there is something in it and I think he saw something in me and it's been a beautiful relationship and he's helped me find my narrative freedom and my creativeness and also my confidence. A dream would be to just do what I love, like film documentaries, film stories, meet people, tell their stories and at the end of the day make money as well. Celine and myself and Miriam Allen, uh, we were kind of the followers on from Ashling Pryor and Barra de Maldraha, and they set up what they called the Film Resource Centre. Everything was a resource in those days, because nobody had anything. The idea was that young filmmakers would have a chance to get access to equipment which they didn't have, and consequently, because of that, could make films. The idea of making a film on your camera was in 1989, not exactly the first thing you'd think of. To tell you the truth, like all things beginning, like in RTE in the early days, like in the FLA in the early days, the Film Centre in its early days was a work of the imagination, of people with ideas, chaos, um, everybody giving a hand, everybody giving everybody else a hand. People began to think of things that they had learned in festivals across Europe, for instance. Um, the One Minute Film Festival, or pitching an idea for a film, or getting the start of, you know, a couple of thousand quid to do anything, something. 
The work of the imagination is endless. You know, the work of vision never stops. People do dreadful things, but then they also do wonderful things. And so there have been wonderful things that have come out of this and will continue to, in spite of everything. You know, in spite of all the villainy and uh, self-seeking and egos and narcissism in this business, as in the rest of the world, there are also pockets of beauty and generosity and great ideas. And that's what the Film Centre is and was and ever, hopefully, will be about. Making games is inherently exciting because it's, it's a form of alchemy where you have code and audio and art and design uh, all coming together to create an experience for players. I am excited about the future of games in the West of Ireland. I think the most exciting things that are happening are the way that the industry is changing and evolving the different types of games that we are seeing and the different types of stories that are told. Some of the most interesting stories that have happened recently have been voices from the West of Ireland. If Found, I think, is a great example. Uh, Dark Side Detective is another excellent example. There's also a lot of game developers that are now living in the West of Ireland, and those game developers are gonna go on to create their own companies. I first became aware of the Galway Film Centre through a speaker. Uh, they brought Brian Algeyer from Insomniac Games here, and I was one of many ridiculously excited people for his workshop. It was absolutely fantastic. And I thought that was amazing to bring somebody of that caliber. So that got me curious about the Galway Film Centre and the things that it was willing to do or interested in doing for people in, in the games industry in the west of Ireland. Now, Recently, the Galway Film Centre has changed its name to Ardon, which means platform. And I think it's a critically important change because nothing says you don't belong as games like the Galway Film Centre. But Ardon says that anybody, this is, this is a, 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 it's a springboard, it's a platform for, you know, bring your work, put it on the platform, how can we support you? Uh, and, and I think that's an incredibly important, inclusive change. And I look forward to all the things that that will bring and all the things that that will mean for creators, not just of games, obviously, but film and, and, and interactive arts, everything that is happening here in the West. We are both from Galway, so it's essential that we tell stories from the environment in which we grew up and in which we live. It's definitely an objective of ours to decentralise the stories that are told in Ireland, so we're quite keen to bring things to the West Coast and to set things in the West Coast. I think the West is incredibly important to our work and the way we tell stories. As I said, we, kind of, we were born in the West, we grew up in the West, we live in the West. These are our people. These are our places. They're the characters we see from, from the cradle to the grave. We want to tell stories about them. About three years ago now, we won Storyland with RTE. And it was RTE that pushed us to come back to the West to film. It was unusual at the time, and Galway Film Centre were fantastic at providing us with crew and locations, etc. So since then, we're, anything that we've written is set in this side of the country. We're vulnerable creatures, and it's great any time we call the likes of Vordon. We have a friendly voice, a supportive voice at the end of the line, who tells us to drop in for a chat. We were lucky enough to win the Galway Film Centre BAI mentorship for screenwriting. Galway Film Centre put us in touch with the most amazing producer, Uno Byrne from The Crown, who worked with us for well over a year and brought our script from initial idea, from a seedling basically, to a full-blown script that enabled us to get an agent in London, which was fantastic. That was thanks to the Goa Film Centre. My outlook on animation in Ireland, when I first got here, I was blown away. Like I said, I was taught in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, how to become an animator. I worked and lived in the studios in Los Angeles, and I, you know, I, I was exposed to a lot of different types of studios, types of animation. Then when I came here, I was like, wow, really, I was really blown away just, just from Ireland itself. It's just the amount of talent that was here and the stuff that was coming out, uh, and just the Academy Award nominations for the, the films. The island of Ireland has just got a lot of animation, and I think this is a golden age. If it was back in the 50s and 60s over in the States, 
when all the animation studios, they call that the golden age. And I think Ireland's in its now. And this is, I'm, I'm usually not the one to be at the right place at the right time, but when I came to Ireland, I think I did. And as far as the West Coast, I can definitely see that there's an eagerness from the authorities and, and, and film, regional film uh, offices like yours and, and, and Limerick, and uh, they really want to see animation grow. And they're really supportive. I mean, they're really putting a lot of time and effort and thinking about it and how to support people and how to get the talent trained up. And, and uh, it's great. And then just to have that kind of knowing that's behind you instead of just kind of floundering by yourself and you know seeing what's happening, at least there's people out there reaching out to you and saying, hey, we're here to help if you need anything. So just even that alone, is, uh, is really important. It makes you feel like, yeah, you're not doing it all on your own. Tasha Rocha, not was a Dalmore, a starcher. A hundred thousand if you starcher, no, the Balach a yena Aaron starcher. I guess Roscoe Blaine and us, near a cut from the fane of a old, a lot the near her, I guess Lucht a real good given, and file Aaron starcher in her scale to hain ancient. Tasha in the Garu, Tasha or Tasha Hain again let Tiji Kaher, August Neil and Milne came on the Gahachala scale Bill Satisha Tacht as Kony Bug Gavla Clear. The same to the scale I shin, August Tastin, Tasha Tastin Ordon on Te at our Ginchin scale, August Neil Tada in Ordon, Ach Glushak Noa. Hun Nismodini Harring Air Tasha, Hunishka scale to ancient, and the same to scale. I think the Glory Film Centre has played a vital role in the growth of the film industry in the West. You know, I mean, I remember going, in, even in transition year, we went on a, a school trip to the film centre when it was back on, I think it was Key Street at the time, and going in there and seeing a, a Steenbeck in action. And, and, I mean, I started my career as an editor, and even from that early moment of, of seeing the reels rushing through the, the, you know, the heads of the Steenbeck, I was, I was kind of taken with it. And it was a real privilege to have something like that in Galway, to be connected to it in a real way, made the whole thing a bit more legitimate and, and made you feel like you were this was something you could really make a career out of. We have a huge potential in the West of Ireland in terms of art, in terms of drama, in terms of just being natural storytellers. And any way we can help to get that translated onto screen stories will be a terrific boon to the industry in the West. It's vital to have an organisation like Ordon in the West of Ireland. Writers need support. We work alone, we spend a lot of time by ourselves, we need the support of an organisation that can tell us that it's not just about the page, the page can go on to film or TV. When people are introduced to tech, people will take to it. I think it's really a question of, of showing them what the possibilities are and making sure that they have they have a path forward if they take to those possibilities. For me, I was exposed to tech early and I took to it. Anything that we can do to make sure that tech and games are on the radar of our young people, that's critically important. And that's something I think we should try to do whenever we can. I think Ardon gave me the platform and a step into the industry in a way and this opportunity has given me this staircase where I can keep climbing if I can and trying and working with people and collaborating and possibly reach the top if I can. <laughs>